OK, I think we should uh, get started here. Um, so you guys are in for a real treat today. We're going to talk about cash balance plans, what that means, and how a cash balance plan can help you reach your retirement goals, reduce your taxes, everything that everybody wants to do to make themselves in a better financial situation uh, come retirement. Uh, joining me today is uh, Kevin Palm. Uh, he is a pension actuary by trade. He has over 25 years experience in the area. Um, he is the absolute expert in uh, navigating the IRS rules with regards to cash balance plans. And because he understands the nuances of these types of plans, he's able to use uh, the rules creatively to come up with solutions for business owners, both small and large, to help them re meet and reach their retirement goals. Um, he works with companies from one individual all the way up to 5,000 plus employees. Uh, and as I mentioned, he's an enrolled actuary. Uh, more importantly, he's a UCLA Bruin, um, but he's also a great person that I've uh, had the fortune of knowing for the past few years now. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Kevin Palm and he can walk us through the ins and outs of cash balance plans and um, get a little bit of learning done this morning. Kevin? Great. Thank you so much, Matt. My pleasure to be speaking with everybody this morning. And my intention is to keep this at about 30,000 feet to discuss how a cash balance defined benefit plan can augment a 401k profit sharing plan. And we'll even talk about making sure you have a 401k profit sharing plan to help with your retirement savings. So with that said, just a little bit about us here at Kravitz. Um, last uh, summer, we were acquired by Ascensus, a big 401k record keeper, and they acquired us for our defined benefit cash balance expertise. But we go back to 1977 when Lou Kravitz started us. We're a national firm with offices around the country, 1,200 clients, and we're looked at as the national leader in cash balance plans. We've even published a book. So what exactly is a cash balance plan? What we're going to do, though, first is take a step back and say, well, why do people like Matt and I recommend qualified retirement plans for people? And does it make economic sense? Well, just to take us back to the basics, let's say Dr. Jones has $50,000 in profit to take out of the medical group. And option one is to just take it home and pay taxes. And assuming a 45% tax rate, $22,500 will go right to you know, Sacramento and the federal government, if you live in California, that is. And the intention of a qualified plan is to take that same $50,000 and invest it in a retirement plan. So all of a sudden you can see there's a lot more capital working for you in your retirement trust. And because of that, when you do a plan versus no plan, which I know Matt and his colleagues at um, ACAP can help with, you can all of a sudden see there can be a whole lot more money at retirement because if you just took it home and tried to invest it tax efficiently, you'd have about a million dollars But if you invested it in a qualified plan, it can accumulate to $2.7 million. And then when you take it out in retirement, it actually lasts longer because you have more money. And by the way, just the background of these calculations is it basically assumes a, a similar tax rate pre and post tax, with sometimes many of us being in a lower tax bracket when we're in retirement. And again, Matt and his colleagues can help run these scenarios for you if you ever have any questions about whether this makes economic sense or not. But why the cash balance plan? What you're going to see here is in the next couple of minutes that we're able to save a whole lot more than the uh, $55,000 or $61,000 that you can save in a 401k profit sharing plan. So our little tagline at Kravitz, the census, is you can squeeze 20 years of savings into 10 years. And for many of us, that makes sense because maybe you've got, we've gotten to 45, 50 years old, putting kids through school, um, building a practice, reinvesting the profits in the practice. So all of a sudden we know, oh my goodness, I'm 10 years out from retirement, so how do I accelerate that? By adding a cash balance plan to your 401k profit sharing plan, that's how you do it. So what is a cash balance plan? Well, a cash balance plan is the best of both worlds. It looks and smells a lot like a 401k profit sharing plan. Everybody has an account, but we have the traditional defined benefit rules working for us where we can accumulate up to $2.8 million at age 62. So we call it a hybrid plan. And you'll hear in my parlance, I actually keep referring to it as a cash balance defined benefit plan because I don't want people to forget that it's a 
defined benefit plan, which we'll get to in a minute why that is. So this slide shows what the limits are at various ages. I like to pick my age band of 50 to 54 years old. You can see that you can a person can put $61,000 in a 401k profit training plan. That includes the 401k deferral and the catch-up amount if you're over 50. And we can add a cash balance plan for another $166,000 for a total tax deduction in a given year of $227,000. And that can equate to tax savings of approximately $102,000, again, assuming a 45% tax bracket. And acknowledging tax savings is an individual analysis, which, again, I know Matt and his colleagues can help with as also working with your tax advisor, you know, your CPA. Kevin, really quick, I want to jump in and, and just add to that and say that um, obviously a cash balance plan requires uh, um, you, you have the ability to save. Um, and you, your point earlier of always deferring that retirement savings to buy the house, put the kids through school, um, whatever your short term goals are, it usually is retirement plan that gets put on the back burner. And what what the cash balance plan helps you do is make up that shortfall for all the times that it was put off from age 30 to age 50, it helps you supercharge that retirement savings in a short period of time. Um, and, and let's use the phrase catch up um, uh, for those who have the ability and the, and the wherewithal to know to, that they need to save a lot to get them to that next uh, phase in retirement. No, well said, Matt, well said. So what is the big difference, though, between the 401k profit sharing plan and the cash balance plan? Well, a 401k profit sharing plan, as many of you know, gets invested in however you want to invest it, you know, working with folks like Matt and figuring out your risk tolerance and all that interesting investment strategy, um, tech strategies. And so at the end of the day, you get out of your 401k profit sharing plan what you put in, you know, your $55,000 or $61,000 limit for this year. And of course, it was, it's been smaller in the past years, but the Thankfully, there's cost of living on these benefit limits, but you get what you get, however the investments go. The cash balance plan, what makes it different is the interest crediting rate is actually a set rate in the document. Um, it can, you'll see there's a, some options with the interest crediting rate, but to keep it simple, it's usually a 4 to 5% rate of return that's guaranteed. So the employer takes on the investment risk. Well, to recap, in the 401k profit sharing plan, the participant takes on the investment risk. And again, the reason for this is it allows us access to that IRS maximum benefit limit that turns out to be $2.8 million at age 62. So it's how we can accelerate the tax deductions. Kevin, on that last slide, you had the interest crediting rate at um, 4 to 5%. Have you seen that go up or down over the last few years? Or what, what's sort of the trend of, of that interest crediting rate since you've been uh, working in this space? It's it's always been in my in all my 33 years in the business, you know, 25 plus years at Kravitz. It's always been about four to six percent. And the old in the olden days, called the olden days, the 1990s, uh, we were using the 30-year Treasury, which was as probably was got as high as five or six percent, maybe even towards seven at times. And now it's down below at below three. And there's a reason. And in a, in a little bit, I'll I'll show a slide about how you choose the interest crediting rate. But right now, it's about four to five percent. And again. It's coming out of that 30-year Treasury rate that there's some legal rules around why that why that rate got chosen, but it uh, that rate right now right now it's about three percent, and I know it's climbing, but so these rates are pretty steady, Eddie, and kind of a, a, a Matt uh, Matt you and I will probably address this shortly, but you need to think of this cash balance investment as your fixed income part of your portfolio. So if people can get their head around that, that it's a way, great way to accelerate deductions, you're not going to shoot the moon with your investments but you're going to have a steady eddy growth over probably a 10 year period and then be able to roll the money out, which we'll get to in a minute, how you get your money out. Great. So what are the key features of a cash balance plan? Well, again, it's, it looks and sm smells a lot like the 401k profit sharing uh, plan. It has an account balance. So people can see their lump sum benefits, if you will. Many times, some of the folks on the phone may have seen a traditional defined benefit plan in the past, and that plan puts out an annuity first. So it, Somehow there's a formula that ca calculates an annuity, say at age 62 or age 65, and behind that annuity lives the lump sum. The magic of the cash balance plan is it puts the lump sum out first in the form of an account balance. And of course, that account balance is portable. If a doctor leaves the medical group they can uh, and they terminate, they can take that money with them and roll it over to their new group's 401k profit sharing plan or into an IRA. Or if they need to, they can 
take it as a lump sum and pay taxes on it. Matt and I would advise you that's a bad idea, but <laughs> nonetheless, it's an, nonetheless, it's an option. Always. And the, and the other key feature is that there's flexibility among shareholders. And at Kravitz, we have close to 200 medical groups of all shapes and sizes, and it allows varying levels of contribution for maybe the 35, 40-year-old doctor versus the 60 to 65-year-old doctor. Everyone's at a different stage of life, has different needs. We can actually set the contribution amounts to manage whatever needs of the individual are. And anchoring the fact, though, that it's, it's a corporate decision of who gets what in these plans. It's not an individual decision. And one of the uh, key features is that the contribution can change, but you'll see if whenever you call up Matt and ask for a, a complimentary plan design for in this type of a, a area, we typically say we like these contributions to stay constant for a few years. And the reason for that is the government does not want these to be supercharged profit sharing plans. So to talk out loud, what would happen in a year maybe where your insurance reimbursements changed or something happened to the practice and income dropped, you can always reduce your 401k profit sharing contributions. We can amend the cash balance plan before people typically work 1,000 hours, freeze the plan, and of course, we can always terminate it if the plan has lived its usefulness and it's no longer needed. So just know there's always options to get out from underneath these types of plans. Kevin, that's a great point. Um, we the, the question we get often when people want to uh, look for other ways to add to their retirement above and beyond the 401k is, what type of commitment do they have? Uh, can I start one and stop one? Basically, all the questions that you would be able to answer for them, kind of, you know, uh, pertain pertaining to that last slide about, you know, I, I want to fly under the radar, I, but I also want to save. And what if my income changes? Sort of that nervousness, that apprehension that people have. Um, so it's good to know that that there's options when you're uh, establishing the plan to to move forward, but also change it if if needed. Right. When we get to the case studies, we'll see that there's there's ways to deal. You know, a lot of times we'll tell a plant a medical group with multiple partners to consider starting off slowly. Maybe everyone goes in for fifty thousand dollars each. You know, not the big dollar amounts. And then as time goes on and people get comfortable with it, they increase their benefits over time. And again, what I want to anchor is it's it's when you typically enter into these plans, you know, the the, the consultant's going to tell you, hey, you should keep this plan around for at least three to five years. That goes to the permanency issues around defined benefit plans. And again, a cash balance plan is a defined benefit plan. And the government just wants these things to be true retirement plans. They don't want just somebody to take a one-year tax deduction because they had a great year and then terminate the plan and, and move on. So, But always know that if, especially in the medical profession, if there's good business reasons for changing benefit amounts or even terminating the plan, it's always possible. And when I say good business reasons, you know, maybe you're adding a bunch of new partners you're thinking of opening up that surgery center. There's all sorts of reasons, you know, good business reasons where you can take advantage of those reasons and change the plan, whether you amend it, freeze it, or terminate it. Great. Does that help One other thing I, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, those are the, that's the type of questions we get when people uh, bring up the, the question of cash balance plan or how they can add additional savings to their account. I just wanted to add one other thing. The webinar is being recorded. Um, there's also a questions box. So if you have questions, feel free to enter your questions. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the plan. Uh, but we're, it's, like I said, it's also going to be recorded and, and housed on our website. So if you ever want to come back and um, relearn a point or uh, you know, make sure something that you, you didn't catch today is, is uh, addressed, um, feel free to come back to our website. It'll be on the website for you to, to review. Go ahead, Kevin. Great, man. Great, man. Thank you. So the other feature, though, is like, okay, so when do we fund these things? Well, it, typically you fund these things just like you fund your 401k profit sharing plan. Your CPA will, or tax advisor will say, let's make sure you fund it before the due date of your tax return. So typically the first round is March or April, depending on your tax entity. Or uh, a big one, though, is September 15th is your actual final deadline in a cash balance plan because that's when it, minimum funding is supposed to be met, even if your tax return is due October 15th. So again, there's time to gather the cash to fund it for the prior plan year. And what we find, though, in uh, this area is the professional firms, you know, bigger medical groups, they'll actually fund the plan as they go. They'll take the money out of current operating uh, cash flow and fund the plan during the year, which there is, is a powerful way to make sure that the money gets invested and that interest crediting rate can be met. And smaller firms that maybe have cash flow 
uh, needs can always fund it in the following uh, year before the due date of the tax return. So along that along those que- along that question, what's is there a, a specific income range or an amount that you you a small business or a, a big business for that matter should be making in order to uh, for the cash balance plan to make sense, or is that really just a case by case and it depends on on each individual situation? That's a great uh, question, Matt. Typically, we see people having income of four hundred to six hundred thousand or more when they entertain the cash balance plan because at the end of the day, the way these designs work well is you still want to net out to the IRS maximum compensation limit of $275,000. Some of the folks on the phone may know that the IRS caps the amount you can take into account for retirement plans. So if you think the reason I say $400,000, that leaves you $125,000 to fund both your 401k profit sharing plan and a cash balance plan, because you know you, you have $54,000 or $61,000 in a 401k profit sharing plan, add another $50,000 or $60,000 in cash balance, that that gets up to you four hundred thousand, and I want to acknowledge that's you know that's net income after expenses, right? That you're going to otherwise take home as a K one distribution or a W two, depending on your business structure. So I hope, is that helpful, Matt? Yeah. So I guess it's sort of a company. It's it 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 doesn't really the type of company you have doesn't really matter. It's more about that. You know, how much you need. Correct. And I will tell you, though, too, a smaller doctor group, you know, a sole practitioner doctor, they can actually, you know, maybe they're making 300000 and they want to throw $150,000 into the plans and take home 150000 That may work as well. The reason it's powerful to try to keep compensation at two seventy five dollars is if, if the doctor has staff or the group has, staff, you know, non-highly compensated staff, which we'll, we'll get to in a minute, but if there's non-highly compensated staff, Congress wants high tides to float all boats, meaning if the owner is going to take a large tax deduction, they want some retirement benefits going to the staff, which you'll see in a minute still makes tax sense because instead of giving money to the government, you're giving it to your staff. But again, to answer your first question, Matt, you don't necessarily need to be making 400000 because I don't want to scare people on the phone because some people maybe are very comfortable in their um, older years socking away as much as they can. So again, if you have a typically a smaller group or you're a sole practitioner, there's ways to do this even with smaller amounts of income. That's a great clarifying point. Thank you. And of course, here's here's the uh, the big feature. So when can I get my money? So typically, a cash balance plan is designed that you can take an in-service distribution in-service distribution age 62, which that's in the law that if you you can keep working it as a doctor or in your in your profession till till well after. Uh, 70 and a half is a magical number where if you're an owner, you have to start taking required minimum distributions. But age 62, you can pull the money out. You can always take the money out when you terminate employment or you know leave the group because of retirement, death, or disability. And of course, I always love to say this out loud, in case of emergency break glass, you can have a plan termination and distribute all the funds through a plan termination. And then, of course, uh, assets are creditor protected in an ERISA qualified plan, both in the profit sharing plan and in the cash balance plan. Um, Matt, you and I discussed this last week, but the creditor uh, bankruptcy creditor protection law 2005 actually tightened up creditor protection on individual retirement arrangements. But what I have heard over the last 13 years is that qualified plan money still has an extra level of security, which I know in the doctor world and in the medical world has some there's some clout there still that you might want to have that extra level of creditor protection. So just to, to clarify that point, I think um, what you're what you're saying is even if you have to terminate the plan and roll it into an IRA, an IRA, um, the money that was in the cash balance plan and is now in the IRA, assuming that the cash balance plan is no longer um, uh, you know, open still has an extra le- level of protection above and beyond, let's say the 5,500 someone's been putting away from, you know, from, from when they started working until some point in time in the future, right? That's right. And actually, there's some famous examples of this where people's IRA money was protected from bankruptcy and civil, uh, civil suits. And um, people go, well, why couldn't they go claim the IRA? Well, sure enough, it came out of an ERISA qualified plan where that protection was prevented the um, bankruptcy judge and the you know the creditors from attacking those funds. So there's some famous celebrities and other folks. You know, there's some good quote unquote war stories out there about how this money was protected. I think everyone's thinking of the same person. Yeah. Um. 
So moving along, the interest crediting rate options, I discussed that you know, typically these plans are set up to have 4 to 5% fixed interest crediting rates used. There's actually, they came out with uh, some regulations in 2010 and 2014 that expanded the interest crediting rate options. And so there's, I'll just say it out loud, there's a plethora of options. It can actually be overwhelming, but to keep it simple for this conversation and also just doing plan designs uh, for anybody that's interested, Typically, for smaller medical groups that have staff, at Kravitz, we pick a 4% fixed interest crediting rate. Matt, that, that's a reasonable rate for you and Ara to hit um, in you know, managing a portfolio. It also manages the staff costs and um, keeps everything copacetic, if you will. You can also um, you can pick a higher rate. You can go to 5% under the law. But typically, that puts a lot of burden on the investment advisor to try to take on that kind of risk. and. At the end of the day, this is still a defined benefit plan, so you've got to minimize that downside risk because if you lose money, the actuary is going to come back the following year and say you've got to put in more money, which, Matt, you were alluding to that. That's one of the spooky things people may think about a defined benefit cash right. balance plan. But if they invest wisely with you and your group um, and, and keep it in a fixed income sort of arrangement, it's usually very manageable. And even then, when you get into larger groups, you can actually even have an actual rate of return-based uh, interest crediting rate or an equity-based rate of return. There are some pitfalls around those techniques. They're, they're usually pretty workable once we talk to the investment committee of like say a larger group. One of the pitfalls though, and the reason I say it's for larger groups is if there's staff in an actual rate of return plan, sometimes their costs can get uh, greatly increased when there's low interest rates. And there's, there's an actuarial reason for that, which I don't wanna bore the audience with at the moment, but just know that actual rate of return is out there but it's, and, it's, and we have we probably now have uh, over 75 plans using actual rate of return, but they tend to be larger medical groups where there's at least 50 partners. And what I will say out loud is typically what Matt and I uh, do together is we'll do a complementary plan design illustration. The first step is let's nail down the tax deduction. You know what's the annual amount of cash going into the plans. Then once that works seems to work well with the um, plan sponsor and working with their tax advisor, then we have the conversation about the interest crediting rate. So I don't want the interest crediting rate it's kind of the uh, tail wagging the dog. If we if we talk about the interest crediting rate first, we'll never think about putting a plan in place. We always want to talk about what's the tax deduction first, then how we invest the money. And again, Matt, you'll agree, investing the money is not a daunting um, conversation. It's just an educational uh, um, uh, trying to think of the right word, just an educational process to help a plan sponsor know which is the correct rate for them. Yeah, that's a great point. That's when they, that's sort of where we come into the picture is developing that portfolio to make sense with the after the, the plan is established and the tax savings is is achieved or hypothetically achieved when you're trying to establish it, uh, backing into what the portfolio is going to look like, like you said, um, is is really a balance between the type of growth you want to receive uh, receive and the the risk of being too aggressive. So it, inevitably it ends up being a plan, like you mentioned, where it's um, more focused on on the, the, the fixed income side, the, the bond side. So it's a little bit more protected on the downside, um, uh, sacrificing that that aggressive growth that you might go for in the 401k profit sharing side of the, of the 401k or uh, of the retirement plan, sorry. Right, and you and I talked about this too, Matt, where um, if you do think of the cash balance plan as your fixed income component of your portfolio, it might allow you to take your 401k profit sharing money and your IRA money and be a bit more aggressive with it if the, if the if your investment risk tolerance is, is is that of that nature. And of course, Matt, I know that's what you and your team does is help people with you know how to allocate that. But I just want to talk about sort of how to think of the cash balance plan and what kind of asset class is best suited for it. Great. And then another interesting feature of the cash balance plan for those with larger medical or larger groups, you can you only have to cover 40% of your otherwise eligible participants in the cash balance plan. So some of our larger groups, and even when I say larger, maybe we're talking about 10 partners and 25 staff, you only have to cover 40% of the people in the group, up to 50 people. So we have some large medical groups that just have 50 doctors in the cash balance plan. Everyone else is in the profit sharing 401k plan. And that's where we fund retirement benefits for the staff. And it's a nice way to control costs. So if you're ever thinking about, wait a minute, I can't put this plan in for my group because I've got 100 doctors um, and 200 staff. I don't want to cover all 300. Know that there's an opportunity to 
be thoughtful about who might be covered in this um, cash balance plan. Acknowledging that there are um, human resource issues of excluding certain people. So at Kravitz, we like to think, figure out if there's a way to do it via job classification to try to minimize those issues. And of course, some plan sponsors can't overcome it and they end up covering everybody anyway. So, and then here's the 50 people that you only, you have to cover up to 50. Once you get above 125 employees, you only have to cover 50 people. So here's some real life examples, uh, Matt, of what this might look like for the folks on the phone and, and who listen to this webinar in the future. A typical company might have four owner doctors. Um, you'll see the $275,000 salary limit. We have a group of highly compensated employees. Maybe they're the um, nurse practitioners or the x-ray techs you know, that, that make more than $120,000. Then we have the staff. And so what we'll do is we'll put this plan in place for um, We'll put, we'll put a plan in place where we first leverage the 401k profit training plan, get everyone to the 61,000 or the 55,000. What's interesting is for group two, we are able to just have to give them 3% of pay, which is kind of magical in the sense it's a top heavy contribution. And um, we don't have to give them any more benefits if indeed the medical group doesn't want to. You know you, we can give them more benefits, but we have to make sure that testing still passes. And then here, here's the first cut of it. A lot of times, Matt, you've seen this where we can give 5% of pay to the staff and the 401k profit sharing plan um, passes for the owners at, at the higher amounts. So this is what ties to what I mentioned earlier about this, the cost to staff. And the reason why the IRS lets and Congress lets these plans happen is we're giving rank and file benefits to people. Then what we do is we add the cash balance plan to um, the 401k profit sharing plan. And here we're just picking the $50,000 each that I alluded to when people want to get started on something earlier. We can still exclude the staff and then we can maybe still get, get away with 5% of pay to the staff. This, this, is, this is a real wonderful example of how you still can give these levels of benefits to the staff and keep it manageable, but really leverage benefits towards the owners. And here's an example of all together with some totals. So you'll see here they're ending up putting in $507,000 in total to the um, participants or and to the overall plan, but 85% of the total contribution is going to the owners. And Matt, you'll agree that's better than sending almost half of it to the government. And oh, they're, yeah. they're still able to save a lot for themselves in retirement. Absolutely. And of course, what if the four owners want to do more? Well, we have this, the second case study just shows what it looks like if the owners do the IRS maximum amounts. And you'll see that IRS maximum amounts do go up with age. And Matt, you can share, you know, we have on our website, uh, our maximum contribution calculator by age. So people can see it by age, but a 60 year old can do up to 254,000. And a 35 year old even can do an additional 66,000. We still exclude the highly compensated group in the middle that are the non-owners. And you'll see though the staff cost goes up to seven and a half percent of pay. So for another two and a half percent of payroll, we can really leverage more benefits to the owners. And here again is the totals. You'll see that they're putting in eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars, which of course they could be um, they could take home as profits, but instead they're gonna put it in the plan and they're gonna realize for themselves eighty eight percent of that and save two hundred uh, or save four hundred thousand dollars in taxes, or I should say and and defer that into the future. I think um, I think what what happens or what TPAs don't get credit for is how creative and how strategic they can be with the plan design to really help uh, the, the the benefit make sense first and foremost for the business owner because that's who that's who is likely reaching out to set up this plan, um, but also for employee retention and kind of within within the guidelines of the IRS law make these plans work for a, a large number of companies, assuming the desire to save is, is there. Oh, and that's that's right. And actually what I like to tell uh, prospects is let's start off with a white sheet of paper and tell us what you want to do. And of course, many times it's like, well, Kevin, can you just cover me? I'm like, well, no, we can't, <laughs> but we yeah, let's, let's cover, let's see how many people we have to cover in the plan. And typically you talk about maybe there's year-end cash bonuses being paid to staff that could be um, parceled into some of it being cash bonuses and some of it being profit sharing contributions. And also I wanted to make sure the audience saw that we say zero to $254,000 up there for owner number one, 
many times we do these illustrations and the, the person we're presenting it to goes, I can't afford $254,000. I'm like, no, you can pick zero to something. So it allows the partner that maybe is not interested in being in the plan, you know, maybe they have uh, kids in college or some other life event that re that minimizes their ability to participate. So again, you can see the real flexibility in this design, and and this is how our complementary design illustrations that uh, can look mad if people are so interested. Great. And with that said, Matt, I'll turn it back to you to see if we've had any questions. Sure. So uh, actually, I wanted to comment on something. One of, where we where we come into play in this whole picture as the asset manager is designing your portfolio to make sense with the different types of accounts that you have. So Kevin mentioned earlier, thinking of your cash balance plan as your fixed income or your you know your more secure the more secure portion of your investment portfolio, and we we take that into consideration when we're developing clients' overall financial plan. How what accounts to be aggressive in, what accounts to buy specific aggressive investments in, and what accounts to buy, you know, the more conservative investments in, all the while keeping in mind the overall investment strategy for the client and their uh, short-term and long-term goals. So this this absolutely this type of client absolutely plays into that type of um, strategy and working with an investment advisor, the third-party administrator, and your your tax preparer. That's when you really have the ability to to use all of these things to for the tax savings, the retirement savings, the, the investment design, all of those um, pieces come together um, to, to really benefit the client in, in a, a great way. So we have a couple questions. Um, one is, I think, kind of just a general question. What, what would you, Kevin, consider the biggest risks uh, of opening a cash balance plan for your company? Um, the biggest risks are just making sure you have the cash flow over that three to five year period to fund the benefits um, with the secondary risk of just making sure you hire a, a wise investment advisor such as yourself to make sure their the risk tolerance in the portfolio is such that there there won't be a big downturn if the market's correct. So those would be risk, risk number one and risk number two. And risk number one, you know, the ability to fund it over a three to five year period, I know is daunting for many business owners. But again, if there's good business reasons to freeze it or, God forbid, terminate it, you still can do that. It's just, again, we don't want the IRS to have um, undue scrutiny of a plan that only lived for two years. And, you know, somebody right. stocked away a half million dollars into it and then got rid of it. That didn't look permanent. So I always like to say the IRS doesn't necessarily want you to have your cake and eat it, too. They don't want you to have large tax deductions and quickly be able to roll it out. They also... The other interesting thing about they don't want you to have your cake and eat it too is in the sense they're going to let you have large tax deductions, but they don't want you to have the large upside in investment returns like you can have in a 401k profit sharing plan. There's a reason why they limit the 401k profit sharing contribution to 55000 or 61000 if you're over 50, because you can shoot the moon in those assets, right? You can invest in almost anything. But in the cash balance plan, they want it to be steady eddy and grow to the $2.8 million age 62. Um, and not necessarily be able to enjoy both a large tax deduction and a large upside on your investment returns. That makes sense. You got to take with one hand and give with the other. Um, so you talked about in the in the webinar about what happens when the plan earns less than it's supposed to. You have to, those makeup contributions. That, you know, for example, if the portfolio was too aggressive uh, and and there was a correction, you have to put in more money. What happens if it's been you know two or three great years and returns are are high and i don't want to say it's a surplus but let's say there's a surplus in the account well, what what are those next couple of years look like or what's the strategy uh with the cash balance plan if that in that scenario oh sure so what happens there is that you have some surplus you could actually reduce future contributions of course you're reducing your tax deduction um um, to, uh, of course, because you have excess earnings and they're trying to keep assets equal to the account balances. But that's what would happen in if you, you worked with a company like Kravitz, we'd be consulting with the sponsor to say, OK, you, you have some surplus. The good news is the government has very large tax deductible limits on these plans. So you can always be pre-funding benefits. So if you're, you're basically saving for a rainy day, having great years, you can stock as much as you want into the plan. What we have to watch out for, though, is there's that $2.8 million limit at age 62 and it trends downwards the younger you are, we wanna make sure there's not too much money for those folks that are accruing the IRS maximum benefit. And again, if you're working with a, a competent TP actual firm, they'll be telling you when you're getting, you know, a, a participant's getting close to their maximum limit. 
such that if indeed, you know, no one's going to enjoy the plan anymore because they're all at the maximum limits, you know, you terminate the plan and get all the money out. Great. Well, that's all the questions that we've gotten. Um, your contact information as well as mine are in the webinar. So when people are going back and, and looking at this or right now, you can write down the information, reach out to Kevin or myself, um, and we can uh, get you set up with uh, uh, an example plan or to see if this is type of plan is, is the right, for, right type of plan for your company, if your income supports it. Uh, and, and as we mentioned in the first few slides, really supercharge your savings um for for uh, uh you know to to get you caught up and, and on track to to reach your retirement thank you kevin very much for taking the time to go over this and um and i'm sure we'll we'll have many people reaching out to to learn more about cash balance plans from you my my pleasure matt thank you so much for the opportunity to be a partner with you thank you